G'day guys, welcome to today's video where we'll do an IPS mod on an original Game Boy, a DMG01. Kicking things off today, let's have a side-by-side -side comparison between two units. The unit on the left is in fantastic shape. It's an original case, it's original screen cover, and original screen of course as well. The funny thing for me in comparison to uh, the unit on the right is the nostalgia doesn't live up to what we could be gaming on today or what we'd enjoy gaming on today revisiting a game which i put a lot of hours into which was pokemon red if the balance for you is that the unit on the left is the best to go back and play a game then you'll play the game on the unit on the left for me when i come to game or revisit a game that i really really enjoy if there is a mod which makes life better, you know, an AV out, a screen mod, which stays true to the original, that's the one I'll personally game on. The other thing is, as far as this hobby goes, the majority of my satisfaction actually comes from doing mods or repairs to the older units. Repairing something that I have nostalgia for and making it functional again, to me, is the ultimate. It's just as good as going back and playing uh, and having moments in games which I remembered from my childhood, but it seems to have a, a further effect for me of uh, preservation. So I really do enjoy it, and I think a lot of other folks out there think the same way. Let's get down to the guts of this unit and, uh, and make it better. The uh, screen cover had come off, of course, uh, as the glue fails and the glue you can see never sits flat either. So you need to scrape it back when you fix a new one, otherwise a new screen won't sit flush. Uh, I haven't actually ever tried reusing an original screen cover because the covers get so scratched. And I think the new tempered glass ones are very, very good. I gave this unit a once over thinking I would uh, do this mod quickly, but I decided to give it a good scrub uh, with baking soda just to really fine up the little um, I suppose uh, collection of dirt in tech is where you know uh, it often builds up uh, you know a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to take off the the residue on the of a sticker on the back cleaning up the the battery case, it's nice to see that no one's ever left batteries in this unit and they've leaked. So we're off to a good start fundamentally. Another interesting point that you might have noticed on the original side-by-side -side comparison was that the unit that was on the right, which was a reproduction case, had actually uh, a more yellowed appearance than this original one, which hasn't been retro-brighted. So it's funny how uh, reproduction cases don't always get it quite right but I think when I did that mod originally I noticed it. This gunk comes off quite easily uh, it, and I think once I'd cleaned this up I realized that that, that dirt in the text really um, probably had to go if I was going to be satisfied with it but I do come back to that once I've disassembled it I'll come back to the idea of using baking soda once I disassembled the case and decided it was worth the effort. Here I am trying in vain a little bit more to try and clean this text, but uh, I'll look in hindsight, I think it's worth making the desk messy and uh, using baking soda because the results are so great. So looking at the glue on the screen here, we'll do a little scrapey scrape just to try and take off some uh, some of that glue around the case without scratching into the plastic. So I'm not sure why it would bother me if I did scratch the plastic because it's being always covered by a screen cover, but um, I suppose it just doesn't sit well with me. At this point, I've got another conundrum. I've got uh, a slew of original screens from units that I've modded which are in working order, mostly. Although some of them do fail, uh, especially on the DMG ones, often you get lines through the LCD of where they're not functioning properly. Um, but I do have working screens for different Game Boys and I wonder what, what will ever come of them because I'm, I'm happier with an IPS mod 
that's what I'll use. Will I ever roll up, roll back the mod? I could, but um, I, I'm unlikely to. Perhaps I should uh, offer a free service of restoring a screen to an original uh, so they don't go to waste if someone's screen's broken. But I'll, I'll leave that food for thought. If you've got an idea of what to do with the original screens, uh, let me know. Putting a new screen cover on here with no scratches is always quite nice and satisfying. Um, the, the gunk that I'd taken off the back of the unit had gone onto the desk and then onto the top of the screen. So uh, we're really just, just beginning what we'll do with the cleaning of this unit. The funny thing looking over a case like this of a 31 year old handheld console is uh, the, the body of the unit doesn't have lots and lots of scratches or dings or dents. I think the generation that got these first handheld consoles really took care of them. I think they are of good quality as well. Taking the unit apart now, there are six screws, two hidden underneath the two batteries behind the battery cover. Once you've gotten all of that apart, the two halves are held together by a ribbon cable, a very sturdy ribbon cable, I might add, unlike uh, ribbon cables of the day, which uh, seem to tear if you look at them wrong. The front side of the unit here houses the, the board for input control and the screen itself, and that entire board gets replaced. The speaker gets reused. On the back side of the handheld, the, the second board um, has the processor and does all the thinking interpretation of the cartridge and everything like that and power supply. So, uh, you know, I know modern mobile phones have moved to dual motherboard and it's, it's really similar that this is uh, brought or separated its functions between the two. Some people don't know how to, how to use a soldering iron, myself included, but reusing it and taking a speaker uh, off of one board and putting it onto another is really quite simple. I don't think polarity matters. Um, either that or I've been really, really lucky every single time, but considering how the majority of my <laughs> projects go, I don't think that's the case. I don't think polarity matters with a speaker like this. Normally you don't need to do anything with the back portion of the console for this mod but to, to clean everything thoroughly I went ahead and took everything out it's just four Phillips head screws the bottom part that I'm unscrewing now um, is responsible for the microphone or headphone out rather there's a little board um, tucked into the side of the battery compartment which handles the DC in and the rest is the, the processor and interpretation of the cartridge, uh, which comes out quite simply. It's not a headache. I know that you move forward a few generations and suddenly everything becomes really, really difficult to assemble and disassemble, at least from my perspective, you know, a, a bit like old cars. Old cars could be fixed with a, you know, uh, a spanner and some time and uh, newer cars, not the case, but scrubby scrub to get all the, the dirt off of, uh, off of the text and little nooks and crannies around the unit. Funny how the inside of this D-pad had, had more of a collection of, of gunk. Maybe the, the play style of the original owner was grinding the, the, the D-pad around, but whatever, we, we cleaned it up. And it's funny how it doesn't come up on camera, but it really, really pops when a unit has had an abrasive clean like that. It looks so good. Just doing my test fit and of uh, the second little daughter board for the IPS and the IPS screen itself. It's always worth just a little bit of planning, especially when in this case, the mod calls for some double-sided tape to hold everything down. If you test fit things and you make sure you know how things are going together, then it, it won't cause headaches later if you were to misalign something or you weren't sure how to put it together. The other benefit um, of testing along as you go is if you didn't seat the cable properly or if something wasn't quite right, then it's easier to um, 
resolve than what I normally do, which is totally reassemble it and then realize it after the fact. Another top tip is um, the IPS screens themselves are, are very, very delicate. So if you're taping it down to something, you've got to make sure that you've got it in the right position because removing it, I believe, would almost certainly damage it and destroy it. So just bear that in mind. Be careful at certain points that uh, a mistake isn't able to be undone. Just putting our, uh, our buttons back into the unit because we're going to aim for a test fit and see how things are working. Reassembly of the rear side is, is very easy, just like disassembly, there's only four screws and getting things seated into the correct spot is just darn easy. Getting things ready for our test run now that things are within the unit, there's only a few screws that are needed to hold things together for the buttons to work. The daughter board is plugged into the new um, secondary main board and what will connect them is a new uh, version of the same sort of ribbon cable. There's no reason we couldn't use the original sturdy ribbon cable, but we may as well use the new one that came with it. One trade-off, I suppose, of the sturdiness of <laughs> these ribbon cables, nothing's ever perfect, is that... Uh, you need to really have some direct force, which is difficult to line up to get in. Uh, obviously, if the pins aren't making contact with the ribbon cable properly, then it's not going to work. But there's just something awkward about getting this together. So uh, you'll excuse my poor camera angle as I... In fact, I just pulled it off screen to make it work. But it worked, so we'll... Uh, well, it got together rather, so we'll put the batteries in to test it. Naturally, it'll be Pokemon Red that will we'll test things together. Don't panic that it's not screwed together. I just want to see that the screen's working, uh, which it is in a, in a really satisfying bright white. I think there's two ways to, uh, or two popular ways, I should say, using the IPS mods that I think a lot of people play on is either uh, the white, which I think is probably what the developers had in mind had they had the ability with the hardware, or there's a, a green tint, there's uh, red tints and yellow tints and uh, other options, and that'll become relevant later on when I test that function. But uh, there's also a you know uh, a simulated color mode where the the unit uh, attempts to pick the colors that it would, but it's not the same as a Game Boy Color. It's not processed in the same way. I don't think uh, by interpreting those grays. So if you would prefer a, a Game Boy Color experience, do the IPS mod to your Game Boy Color. It's an easy way to do it. Um, again, assembly traveling along quite simple here. We're seeding that speaker uh, that we reattached, which works perfectly. Under the impression that everything's working, uh, naturally I do a, com a completely uh, reassemble the housing and pull the screws back together, but there is something that's not working right, of course. Here we are, very excited. I'm watching the intro screen and I, I decide to cycle through the different color palettes, which on an original housing of the Game Boy, um, as per the instructions, there's probably, you know, uh, half a millimeter of plastic which prevents the travel of that button on the new board. So whilst the guides do say that you need to, to trim this and that, and in the latest iterations of the, you know, the, the 3D printed things which hold the screen in place and, and uh, unlike the Game Boy Colors, which definitely do need quite a bit of case modding, the DMG01, I found everything fit perfectly on a test fit. Everything lined up perfectly. The screen was all great. But this little bit of plastic um, under what would be the contrast wheel uh, and is now responsible for screen menu and, and cycling of color palettes does need to be cut down. So uh, just bear that in mind and uh, have your Dremel ready 
if you want it to be a nice, beautiful finish, which I managed to get uh, quite easily. So here we are cycling through the pallets, wait for the credit screen to come up. You can see that green one, very, very popular, uh, the white one, which I enjoy. Uh, and there's that color that I was talking about, which is not quite right. Um, but a successful mod, you see the side there, all nice. I'm pumped that it's finally working and I don't need to take it apart <laughs> again. <laughs> um, but I think it's uh, just a few more screws to get everything finished. Thank you so much for watching these videos. Doing these mods has been heaps of fun because I really enjoy the simplicity of the mod and, and especially the outcome. The outcome on these screens to play on and to enjoy is fantastic. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.